Greetings and welcome to a two-part series in the Airfoil Labs King Air 350. Part 1 will showcase a step-by-step -step tutorial on the required systems checks in accordance with the manufacturer's checklist. Part 2 will go over the engine run-up items. You can reference my video on June 1st of 2020 demonstrating these checks in the real airplane. Once both engines are running in stable, you would continue with the before taxi and before takeoff run-up checklist provided by Airfoil Labs. If you are using the checklist that I have provided, it is the after start checklist. Let's begin with the electrical system check. We will start by moving the Gentai switch to open. We're looking for the left Gentai open and the right Gentai caution lights to be illuminated. Next, we'll come up to the voltmeter. On the triple fed bus, we should see 26.5 to 28 volts. On the right gen and left gen, we should see 27.5 to 29 volts. And that they're within one volt of each other. And next is the center bus. We're looking for a minimum of 23 volts. We'll come back to the gen tie switch and move it back to norm. Both the left gen tie open and the right gen tie open lights should extinguish. Next, we'll move the bus sense switch momentarily to test. You should see the left and right gen tie open and the bat tie open caution lights illuminated. You will notice the number one AC bus warning light illuminate, however that is not a correct indication part of this test. We will come back to the voltmeter and verify that the center bus is indicating zero volts. Back to the bus sense switch, we'll move that momentarily to reset and the left and right gen tie open and the bat tie open lights should extinguish. And then back up to the voltmeter, the center bus should indicate between 27.5 to 29 volts. The gen load should be within 10% of each other. Next, we'll check the inverters. We start off by checking that both inverter switches are on and that the number one and two AC bus warning lights are extinguished. Next, we'll move the number one inverter switch to off. We should see the number one AC bus warning light illuminate. Then we'll move the number one switch to bus transfer, and that number one AC bus light will extinguish. Then we'll move the number one switch back to on, and verify that that number one AC bus warning light is still extinguished. We'll do the same thing for the number two inverter. We'll move that switch to off. We should see the number two AC bus warning light illuminate and then move that same switch to the bus transfer. That light should extinguish. We'll move the number two switch back to on and verify that the number two AC bus light is still extinguished. And that's your inverter check. Once the electrical system test is complete, you can continue on with the after start checklist. Next, we'll look at the instrument vacuum and de-ice pressure check. On the airfoil labs checklist, it's called the bleed air valves test. We'll start by moving the left bleed air switch to pneumatic and environment off, two clicks down. The pneumatic pressure in gyrosuction gauges should indicate normal pressure. The left and right bleed fail warning lights should remain extinguished. Next we'll move the right bleed air switch to pneumatic and environment off, two clicks down. The pneumatic pressure in gyrosuction gauges should indicate zero and the left and right bleed fail lights should illuminate. However, they are not illuminating, and I'll take this as a simism. Next, we'll move the left bleeder switch back to open or environment off. The pneumatic pressure in gyrosuction gauges should indicate normal pressure, and the left and right bleed fail warning lights would extinguish if they were previously illuminated. And last, move the right bleeder switch back to open it or environment off. The next system check will be the pressurization check. I recommend using the 2D panel of the pressurization panel for ease of use. We will start by moving the environmental bleeder switch to normal, then the bleed air valves to open. On the pressurization controller, adjust the cabin altitude knob to indicate 1,000 feet below pressure altitude. Since we're at sea level, I'm going to set minus 1,000. 
set the rate knob to the 12 o'clock position. Cabin pressure switch, hold at the test position. Cabin altimeter and VSI, check for descent indication. Cabin pressure switch, release back to the press position. And pressurization controller, set as required. Next, we'll check the autopilot and yaw damp. We'll start by checking the pitch trim is in the takeoff position, which will be two to two and a half units nose up. Electric pitch trim switch to the on position. Then verify the pitch trim off caution light is extinguished. Elevator in the forward position. Autopilot engaged should see the autopilot and yaw damp indications in the electronic attitude indicator. Next, operate the electric pitch trim in both directions. This should disengage the autopilot but keep the yaw damp on. So there's up. We'll turn the autopilot back on. And then pitch down. Autopilot disengages and the yaw damp stays on. Next, we'll move the elevator to the centered position. Engage the autopilot and apply aft pressure on the elevator. The pitch trim should travel nose forward. However, that is not modeled. And the same thing, we'd apply forward pressure and the pitch trim should travel nose up. But again, that's not modeled. For the last step, I recommend bringing up the 2D autopilot panel. The autopilot trim disconnect switch, which is the big red button under flight control, needs to be depressed to the first level. Depending on your hardware configuration, I recommend using just the mouse to press the button. You should see yaw disconnect and autopilot disconnect on the autopilot panel flashing and then extinguish. And that completes the autopilot check. Next we'll check the yaw damp. Again I recommend bringing up the 2D panels for the autopilot and the pressurization panel. Turn the yaw damp on should see yaw illuminate on the autopilot panel. Next, we'll check for the pedal resistance. By moving the rudder pedals, you should not see any movement, so this is an incorrect simulation. Next, move the rudder boost switch to yaw control test. And you should see the rudder boost off caution light illuminate. Next, move the rudder boost switch back to rudder boost and the rudder boost caution light should extinguish, which it did. Next is the electric pitch trim check. Verify the electric pitch trim switch is checked on. Pilot and co-pilot trim switches check operation. Move each dual element switch forward and aft to verify the trim is in op. Unfortunately, these switches are not modeled independently, so we cannot verify this step. Move both dual element switches forward and aft. Verify trim operates nose down and nose up. So this is nose down and nose up. And last, ensure the pilot trim switches overrides the co-pilot trim switch. So if the co-pilot was trimming down, I'll trim nose up and it does override it. Autopilot trim disconnect button, press the second level. I recommend just pressing this button and holding it in until you see the pitch trim off caution light illuminate. Then you can release it. Blast electric pitch trim off then on. The pitch trim off caution light should extinguish. And that's your electric pitch trim check. The last major component of the system checks is the ice protection. These checks are required before every flight if you plan to fly into known or forecast icing conditions. We will start with the engine auto ignition check. Power levers idle. Engine auto ignition switches to arm. The left and right ignition on lights should illuminate. Power levers advance above 17% torque. And the left and right ignition on lights should extinguish. Power levers back to idle. 
and the ignition lights come back on. And engine auto ignition switches back to off. Verify the ignition lights extinguish. Next is the windshield anti-ice check. Move the windshield anti-ice switches to high by clicking down. Observe an increase in the load meters. Then move the switches back to off and a decrease in the load meter. Now move the switches to norm. Observe an increase and then move the switches back to off and then observe a decrease. Next, we'll check the prop de-ice. Move the auto prop de-ice switch to on. Normally, we would monitor the ammeter for 90 seconds to ensure the automatic timer operation is functioning properly. Each side, left and right, is heated for 90 seconds, so when one side is complete, the ammeter would momentarily decrease, then increase as it switches sides. In order to expedite the video, we will assume the timer is functioning properly. Manual prop DI switch, hold in manual. Watch the load meters increase and the DS ammeter drop to zero. Manual prop DI release and the DS ammeter should go back to 26 to 32 amps. Automatic prop DI switch to off. And the last check is the surface DI. Condition levers to high idle if required. Pneumatic pressure check. Surface DI switch single and release. The wing DI and tail DI lights should illuminate, then extinguish. However, they are not functioning as designed. Normally, we would see the wing DI light illuminate for six seconds and then the tail de-ice illuminate for 4 seconds. I did notice when I held the surface de-ice switch in the single position, the wing and tail de-ice lights do come on. But that is still an incorrect indication. Next we'll check the manual operation. Holding the switch down in the manual position, we should see the wing and tail de-ice lights come on. and release. Once the surface DS test is complete, move the condition levers back to low idle. Alright, that concludes the required aircraft systems checks. Please leave your questions and comments below. Thanks for watching.